Um, hello everyone, my name is Julio, and I went through the process of um, understanding how to design pressure vessels. Um, I realized by doing this case study that there are main differences between a large pressure vessel and a small pressure vessel like a soda can. So, um, first of all, when we start the process, both processes start the same. Uh, we come up with equations, uh, specifically the stress uh, in the wall and the stress that is required to make the crack propagate. So this is the thickness here, and it's, we just assume a, a size for the crack. So the initial thought is basically, if we design something that is stronger than the applied pressure uh, by combining these two equations, uh, we get a material index of uh, K. If, so, hold on. if we design things uh, with, the, with a material uh, fracture toughness, with a fracture toughness uh, bigger than the desired uh, pressure, um, we end up like hitting the spot. But um, I realized that it's not, it's not quite accurate because uh, this process doesn't take into account larger cracks. So um, we got to come up with an equation that um, applies those larger, larger cracks specifically for small pressure vessels. And we end up with a material index of um, material index that takes into account uh, the fracture, the fracture toughness, and the yield strength. Um, and um, okay, so in uh, in the graph, this is going to be M1, this is going to be M2, and this is going to be M3. So for large pressure vessels, what we do is basically um, design design them in a way that okay. <laughs> I don't know it's first time. So for large pressure vessels, the goal is to design a vessel that can, uh, can get a crack, that can crack without uh, yielding. So in this case, if we compare this equation to the previous one, we take into account the thickness. Uh, we want to design something that, um, a, a crack that can go through the whole thickness and still be safe. So if we apply our pressure uh, equation, uh, this one here. We solve for pressure. We solve for pressure, and then uh, apply our material index in there. Uh, we come up with a third material index that takes into account the fracture toughness again square divided by the yield strength. And then of course, um, like up to here, let's say our, our design is safe enough, but we also wanna wanna have um, wanna save money, right? We, we just don't wanna make something super thick. So a fourth um, material index would be just the yield strength, and then um, kind of play with the three of them to see which materials can give us a yield strength, um, a crack design uh, strong enough to not to not break, and then um, and then you know the, the thinness for for the for the pressure vessel. So we come up with uh, we end up plotting. Now, fracture toughness against elastic limit of or um, yield strength, and then we have the first uh, the first material index would be um, basically a slope of one um, with a working hang on what was it with a working thickness of 100 millimeters. So that means um, that the crack could be actually 100 millimeters long. Um, and still won't, won't fail. Um, the second one will be our material index for the large pressure vessel, which is actually a slope of 0 0.5. And then the third one will be uh, just our um, yield strength. So we end up with just this region up here, where most pressure vessels are made of. Um, we get our aluminums, our stainless steels, and and coppers, uh, mostly metals. There are also some plastics, some uh, plastics alloys that are used for for like beer containers, but those are like not so common. Uh, most of the time, it's metals. Um, and then, so in summary, was uh, the design was to understand how small pressure vessels or large pressure vessels are made. Uh, small are usually designed to yield before they leak. And then the large ones are designed to leak before they yield, basically. 
Um, the materials selected for both of them were, as I mentioned, stainless steel, um, copper, aluminum alloys, uh, mostly metals. And then um, concluding remarks, uh, large pressure vessels are usually made of steel. Uh, some engines uh, are made out of copper because they're graded, they're better, better for corrosion. Um, and then when we're designing a pressure vessel, depending on the thickness, um, corrosion can also be a, a factor. Uh, in this case, if, if we're you know designing something like like it's ten millimeter thick and corrosion can eat like a tenth of it. It's not a problem, but if the design is only one millimeter thick, then um, it becomes a problem and has to be taken into consideration as well. So my name is Tania Johnson, and I did my design on um, stiff, high damping materials for shaker tables, which are not the wooden tables that the shakers make they're known for. It. They are um, tables that kind of oscillate on high frequencies to determine whether or not building satellites and other things could, materials can withstand the oscillations of like going into space or earthquakes or stuff like that. So that's what it is. Do I just know? All right, so uh, the design problem is to find a material that works for, you know, the shaker table's properties. It's got to have, it's got to specify a radius. It's got to be stiff enough to avoid distortion. It's got to have frequent, natural frequencies above the operating frequency to avoid resonance. It's got high dampening to minimize vibrations, and it's got to be tough enough to stand all the shock. So the model description mainly in t is about um, the power, the thickness, the mass of the material, the bending stress, the moment, and all that added <laughs> together finds the um, material index given of the cube root of the Young's modulus over density. And uh, some of the other important requirements are that it's got to have a high mechanical dampening. So we determine that you use um, the loss coefficient. And the second, that the fracture toughness is on the table to withstand the handling of climbing forces, so it's just got to be strong enough to withstand it, and it can't cost too much. Also, another one, because a lot of like schools, classes use it, it's got to be light, so and cost isn't shouldn't be that high just for that, because a lot of architecture classes use this. So having a constraint of Young's modulus being above 30 gigapascals and the loss coefficient above 0 0.001, you get this search region right up here. And uh, in it, it's mainly just the metals, and mainly magnesium alloy, titanium alloy, CFRP, and the cast irons and steels. And from all that, uh, magnesium alloy has the best balance between both of them. And hardly any of it falls out of this area. And a secondary option would probably be CFRP, which has a lower dampening, but is also possible. Titanium alloys has a higher dampening, but um, it's expensive. <laughs> yeah. um, so the choice that was given was the best choice is magnesium alloy. Uh, it has the best combination for both dampening, density, and the young modulus. And Please don't ask questions. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs>